Hi, I'm Tom Warrick, and uh, I'll be your instructor this semester in Econ 155. Uh, it's the principles of macroeconomics, but this is basically the uh, beginning course in economics. Um, I wanted to mention to you just a few things in this introductory discussion, and uh, then the next time we'll start with uh, uh, basically the lecture and the textbook, and we'll have students in here at the same time. Um, what do I want to start with? Um, the textbook I use is by a guy named Roger Arnold. Uh, the title of the book is just Macroeconomics, and uh, there's a study guide to accompany that. You ought to get the textbook and the study guide. We'll have additional support materials um, on the internet, so you'll be able to go there and get class handouts and announcements and things like that. Uh, in just a few minutes, we'll go to a computer, sit down, and uh, talk a little bit about the internet uh, for those of you who are not familiar with it. Uh, let me encourage you as the semester goes along to use email to communicate with me. You're certainly welcome to give me a call or come by my office. My telephone number is 836-5060 uh, and uh, my office is room 370 uh, here in this building. And um, anyway, uh, use the email though to get in touch with me if you'd like to um, ask me a question, something that you're confused by, or if you'd like to check on your grade after you've taken a test. We do have a tutor in the economics department, so if you find out that you're having a little bit of difficulty with something, uh, you can either come see me or get in touch with the tutor. Uh, the tutor's hours will change each semester, and those will be uh, posted on my web page for this class. And so uh, be sure that you take advantage of these resources if you need the help. Let me talk just a little bit about the course, and then we'll go into some of the details, the grading, and so forth. Um, economics 155 is a... Um, uh, a course that examines the operation of the economy, and that's the best way to describe it. Uh, and it's the operation really of not just any economy, but our economy, a market economy. And in a market economy, people are free to come and go as they please to a great extent. There are certain rules and restrictions, but uh, we don't look uh, very much this semester at an economy that's organized along different lines, let's say where the government would be making the decisions and telling people where to work and so forth. So we'll be looking at the operation of a market economy, and we'll also look at the policies used by our government to influence economic conditions. Um, I think the students who will get the most use out of this would be people who are uh, interested in the operation of the economy, maybe for their personal uh, reasons, or uh, maybe they're business majors and uh, want to go into one of the other business disciplines, accounting or marketing, something like that, and need to have uh, an introduction to how the economy operates. Um, Econ 155 is a general education course, so it will satisfy the requirements the university has for students uh, for their general education requirements. So, uh, and I suppose that a lot of students are here for that reason. I hope that you'll find out, um, catch the bug maybe, uh, and get as interested in uh, the economy as I am, so that uh, this isn't uh, like taking medicine so much as being let in on a secret. And uh, I'll be the guy who tries to let you in on the secret as things go along. Just in general, talking about economics, economics is a social science. Uh, what we mean by a social science is it, it deals with, it looks at uh, the way people, individuals behave, and also interaction between individuals. And uh, there are other social sciences, of course, besides economics. There's history and political science and anthropology, sociology. Uh, you're familiar with those, I'm sure. Uh, what we are going to do in economics is we look at that aspect of human behavior where that um, a person is using their, their service, their time, and their material uh, wealth in order to satisfy their needs and their wants. And um, in a sense, then, we are dealing with uh, just one branch of human behavior. And uh, then we'll talk about how people interact with each other in the marketplace. Economics also deals with uh, what I would call the macroeconomy, and the macroeconomy is everything added together into one lump sum. Um, for example, we'll be talking about a term like gross domestic product. Gross domestic product is the biggest measure of economic activity, and it basically adds together uh, the output produced by me and you and uh, the person on the street, and we add all that together, and we get gross domestic product. Uh, you'll hear that term, uh, or I'll say GDP many times for gross domestic product. You'll hear that term uh, probably a thousand times before the semester's over, so you'll become very familiar with that. 
Economists develop models which are really just complex explanations of how people interact with each other in the marketplace and how the economy operates. And really the purpose of this class is to introduce those models to you. Um, there's one thing that you always want to keep in mind when you're studying economics, and, and that's this. We assume that when people are going out there and interacting in the economy, interacting with each other, and deciding whether to buy or sell something and so forth, uh, we always assume, we economists always assume, that people are interested in furthering their own interests. They're, we say self-interested. And um, that is one thing that makes economics a little bit different than some of the other social sciences. Um, a lot of times uh, social sciences don't look at what motivates people, but just talk more about the behavior of people and their interaction. But w all of our science here, or the economic science, starts off with this idea of motivation. We assume that people are self-interested. And so uh, uh, I guess what I'm saying to you here is you should always look for that in, in the background of whatever we talk about. Um, our, I mentioned a gross domestic product a moment ago. Uh, if you can believe it or not, if we add together all of the production by everybody in the United States, uh, the total value of that production each year is on the order of eight, nine trillion dollars. A uh, trillion dollars is a thousand billion, so we're really talking about huge numbers. In addition to uh, just talking about the gross domestic product, how big it is and what causes it to be that certain amount, we're also interested in uh, government policy. You know, if uh, gross domestic product is going down, a lot of people are unhappy, and uh, so are elected officials, policy makers. They try to do something about that. They try to get the gross domestic product to grow. And so uh, that'll be another thing that we talk about this semester is uh, the economic policies that uh, are undertaken, monetary policy and fiscal policy, the policies that are undertaken to try and regulate or at least influence gross domestic product and keep it growing at a steady rate. We don't want it to grow too rapidly because we tend to get into inflation during those periods and, and we don't want gross domestic product going down because when it does, people are out of work and businesses are failing and there's a great deal of unhappiness and and really economic misery during those periods. And so uh, policymakers take a, uh, a big interest in these issues. And uh, since policymakers care about it and since people care about it, then we see these issues discussed a lot in the news as well. So one of the things that I hope that you'll be able to do when the semester is over is uh, read the newspaper, the Wall Street Journal, or uh, turn on the news and read a little bit about the economy or hear about it and uh, feel comfortable with the terminology that's being used, what it means. <laughs> Maybe sometimes you'll be able to, to see the mistakes that they make, the, the newspaper reporters. Anyway, um, to succeed in economics, what's the, I guess the thing that I would tell you would be very important about succeeding in economics is to recognize that even though you've heard a lot of these terms before, money and income and the economy, even though you're familiar with those terms, um, uh, you're familiar with them in the way that a layperson is who's just, you know, heard them before, but economists have very particular strict meanings for these terms, and uh, so I guess what I would tell you to, uh, to do as the semester goes along is work very hard on your vocabulary of economics. When you hear me use a term like money, um, don't just think, yeah, I know what that is and, and tune me out for a minute or two, but think, you know, maybe this guy will have a different definition of money than what I'm familiar with. And pay attention to those definitions, write them down, think about them. And, um, uh, and the same thing will be true with the, all the concepts that I introduce as the semester progresses. I've mentioned here a moment ago, gross domestic product. Uh, maybe you've heard that before, but uh, perhaps you don't have a very technical understanding of it, or maybe the uh, relationship between gross domestic product and some other variables. And so uh, I think the most important thing you can do is to listen to those concepts, make a sort of a list of them, know a definition of the concepts, and then uh, also know how one concept is related to another one. And uh, that's really the purpose of the study guide that goes along with the textbook, is to help you develop that vocabulary and understand the key concepts. Uh, that's a very important thing. Uh, it's easy to start thinking about, gosh, I've got to learn these theories and know all the theories. But the important thing for you to know is, is that you're never going to learn those theories and master those unless you're comfortable with the building blocks that go into it, and that's these economic concepts. And so uh, pay most attention to the concepts, and then the theories will be a lot easier for you to master. Um, let's talk about grades. What we'll have this semester is we'll have four exams and then a final. 
Uh, the tests will be multiple choice, true, false, that type of thing, uh, objective tests rather than essays. And um, those tests will cover material that we discuss in class as well as material that's in the textbook. Um, I'm an economist and I believe in incentives, so what I want to do is give you an incentive to come to class and watch the tapes uh, as well as to read the textbook. So I'll put uh, questions uh, on the uh, tests that come from the book and uh, other questions that come from class, and, but most of the questions you'll find come from both the textbook and the class. And so uh, that's where you're going to run into most of this material. So we'll have um, five exams counting the final. The final exam will be comprehensive, and by that I mean that uh, it will cover sort of the high points of the entire semester. So uh, you don't want to forget about some of these things that we've talked about in the first couple of weeks because uh, you'll be held accountable for them on the final exam. You and every other economic student will be taking that same final exam um, at the end of the semester. And uh, it's a standardized final. And so uh, I hope you do well on it. And I feel like one of my important goals is to help you get ready for that final exam. Uh, I don't make it up, but it is standardized type material that is talked about in all of our economics classes. The grading scale is 87% uh, is an A, 77% is a B, 67 is a C, 57 is a D. Um, that won't really change if I give you a harder test than I intend to and the grades are particularly low. I'll come back and uh, add some points in to adjust the, uh, the test scores and bring them up to a reasonable level. I hope that's not necessary, but if it is, I'm not afraid to do that. And so don't worry about me just giving an impossible test and nobody passes. That's not going to happen. Uh, there will be a reasonable number of these higher grades, and, and unfortunately, there will be a, a certain number of the lower grades as well if students don't get the work done. Um, you'll have two opportunities to take each test. Uh, the one will be during the regular class period in the evening, and then there will be um, another time, an optional test day, uh, on Saturdays. And uh, uh, you will have those two opportunities, and it will be up to you whether you come in the evening or come on a Saturday to take the test, but you will have to take it one of those two times. There won't be other opportunities where you can just stop by my office and say, oh, how about me taking the test now? Unfortunately, I won't be able to accommodate those requests. So be sure that you uh, plan ahead. If you know that you're going to miss the evening class, uh, you should be sure that you're going to have uh, your Saturday open so that you'll be able to take the test then. Um, You'll have a schedule that I'll be handing out uh, on the first evening of class, uh, and that will tell you when each lecture is going to be. And also, I'll have that information at my website. Let me uh, give you my idea, at least, on how to study for a test. And uh, let me sort of begin by saying that maybe my idea is not the best one for you. It's really more along the lines of how I studied for tests when I was in college. And um, if you find that something else works better, that's great. But if you're at a loss and just don't know what to do, uh, here's my idea. You're going to do the best on the exam if you anticipate in advance what's going to be on the test. Uh, and what I'm saying is don't just come in and sit down and go, gee, I wonder what's going to be there. Plan ahead. Uh, sort of sit down two or three days before the exam and, and make yourself out a list and say, here's what's going to be on the test. And then study very hard. Focus your energies on those things that you're confident will be on the test. And uh, if you're paying attention and have a good idea what will be on the test, then by focusing your energies on those things, you stand a good chance of getting a good grade. Now, that won't get you 100% on the test, and that will take really a, a much bigger effort. But uh, to do pretty well on, on, in the class or on the test, um, I think anticipating what will be there is really the key. Uh, if I were you and I was trying to make an educated guess what will be on the exam, what I would do is this. I'd get out my class notes and go through those notes, you know, since the last test, but go through the notes and say, hey, what has been emphasized the most? And uh, hypothetically, you might come up with a list of 20 or 30 things that have gotten a great deal of emphasis uh, from the class discussion. So you'll have a list of 20 or 30 things, and gosh, I think that's important. And then uh, go through your textbook and do basically the same thing. There might be one or two chapters we've covered for that exam, uh, and you've read the book, so go through and make a list of, let's say, 20 or 30 things that have gotten a lot of emphasis in the textbook. Then bring those two lists together. And uh, basically, uh, anything that's been talked about and emphasized in class and emphasized in the textbook, uh, that ought to make up your sort of final list of what's going to be on the test. 
the textbook author and I are supposed to be giving you some hints what's important. And so if we've done our job and you do your job, you should have a list of 30 or 40 things that have received a lot of emphasis. And I'm saying to you, focus your energies on that. Don't go back and reread everything in the book and watch all these lectures over again. There's not enough time for that. Plus, you just be reviewing exactly the same material with no focus at all, just kind of going through things one, two, three in order. Um, Focus is the idea in that last day or two leading up to a test. You only have a limited amount of time and you want to put your time in on those items that will be on the exam. As I say, that won't get you 100%. If you want 100%, you're going to have to know everything. But uh, if I think you can do reasonably well, you know, 80, 90% by just having a good idea in advance what the most important things are and studying those. Um, missed exams. What if you miss a test? Well. Uh, you really need to get in touch with me and let me know uh, what the problem is so that you can have an excused absence. I'm not a real stickler on that, but you certainly need to have something other than just I don't feel like coming in or, uh, you know, I, I don't know, I partied too much last night or it was my, uh, my birthday and I just feel like taking a day off. But if you've been ill or a family member's been ill or whatever, we'll work something out and you'll have an excused absence. Um, what I would suggest to you is you have two opportunities to take each one of these tests, as I say, on the evening or on a Saturday, the evening of class at our regular time. Um, and so if, you know, there's an illness in the family or you're ill, uh, you're still going to be able to make that other class meeting and take the test. But uh, if you should miss both of those, uh, you for sure need to contact me and uh, you can call my number. I think I mentioned it earlier, it's 836-5060 and either talk with me or leave voicemail and make sure that I'm aware of what's going on. So if there's an excused absence, um, what we will do is this. I'll leave the grade book blank at, um, for the exam that you miss, and then I'll come back in and fill it in with whatever percentage score you get on the final. If um, you do not contact me and just don't show up, that's an unexcused absence, and then you will get a zero. And so I would certainly urge you to um, to, to stay in touch with me if there's something that's preventing you from coming to take the, uh, the exam. Now, after these tests are over, uh, you'll want to know your grades. There's really a couple ways for you to get the grade. I guess there are three. One would be when you come in to take the exam, bring an envelope with your name and address on it and a stamp. Please provide the stamp. And uh, I, a few days after the exam's over, I'll mail you your grade. Uh, a second way that you can get that is come by my office. Um, usually during office hours. Uh, there are other times that I'm around, of course, but uh, uh, it might be a little bit difficult for you to just kind of come by until you finally catch up with me. Um, you can certainly call me and make a, an arrangement to come by in the afternoon or whenever is convenient for you. But I think the best way for you to get your grade is to email me. Uh, I always check my email every day, and as soon as I have your grade, I'll be happy to send that to you. And I would also encourage you to use that email uh, just to ask me questions. Uh, and I mean, you know, if there's something that I've discussed in class or something in your textbook and you're having trouble, then send me an email. You've got plenty of time to kind of word the question in your own way, whereas sometimes just on the telephone or in person, you might have a little bit of difficulty uh, putting things in the way that you want to, clearly and so forth. Uh, but send me an email and, and I'll be happy to send you my answer. Uh, we've got a website uh, for the class and we'll be uh, going to a computer here in just a few minutes and looking at that and I'll talk with you about uh, Bear Mail, the website where you can send mail if you don't have your own uh, internet uh, software or email software I should say. But uh, uh, we'll be talking about that but uh, let me encourage you to use email uh, to do this. The internet is really a powerful uh, technology, and many of you already know that, but for those of you who don't, uh, that is the way of the future. And there's no time like the present to get started using this and to appreciate some of its benefits. Uh, let me put out one little warning that some students will forget about, but I don't ever want the opportunity to go by without me making this clear to you. If you stop coming to class and just say, well, I'm not going to be taking these exams and whatever, uh, you must come to me and get me to sign a drop slip. Um, that's the only way to do this. If you don't come and ask me to sign a drop slip and just don't show up anymore, then you'll start accumulating zeros on the test scores, zero on the final exam, and then I'll be forced to give you an F for the class. I don't want to do that. 
uh, you don't want to do that. And for sure, if you come in and just say, hey, I need to drop the class, there won't be any hard feelings and you know, no screaming and shouting and so forth. I'll just say, well, that's too bad, and sign your drop slip and you go on your way, and there's no reason for you to have that F on your grade card. So be sure and keep that in mind. The last day to drop uh, is, well, the, the last day to drop a class is roughly a week, week and a half before the semester is over. I have absolutely no control over that date. And so, uh, you know, don't come in the day before class is over and say, oh, I want you to fix this. I can't do it. I don't have that power. Uh, over in the administration, they set those dates. The calendar set a long time in advance, and the faculty just lives with it. So I'm telling you, at about a week or 10 days before class is over, if you have not been coming, you be sure to get here before that day and get me to sign that drop slip. Finally, to get the most from a telecourse. You know, students taking a telecourse are, in a sense, they are at a disadvantage, but in another way, they have an advantage. The disadvantage is you can't just throw up your hand and ask a question. Uh, you can throw up your hand and ask a question, but nobody will answer. You'll be sitting there at home watching this. Um, but, you know, you can't get a, a quick uh, answer to your question. Now, what you can do, as I mentioned just a moment ago, is you can send me email and say, hey, here's my question. What's the answer? You'll get back a, a pretty quick answer. But that is a, a disadvantage. You're not sitting right there in the class where you can ask the questions live. Here's your advantage. Um, this is, uh, well, it depends on the situation that you have. But if you're watch watching this on the telecable, you have an opportunity to tape this. And then watch it later on. If, if you are not watching on telecable, you've rented the tapes from the bookstore. And so you already have it on tape. And so what I'm saying to you is, one way or another, uh, put these lectures on uh, tape and then find a time that's most convenient for you, you know, 8 o'clock in the morning or 10 o'clock in the morning. That might not be convenient for you, and the students in class have to be here at that time. So you can watch this at a uh, time that's convenient for you, maybe after the kids have gone to bed or on the weekend when uh, your work is not keeping you busy. So you can watch it at your convenience. And then you have that pause button and that rewind button and that fast forward button. And what you can do is something that none of the students in a regular classroom can do. Uh, you can have instant replay. You can watch a segment over and over if there's something that's troubling you. And you, know, you say, well, what did he say about that subject? And um, you can listen to it until you, know, you think that you've mastered that idea. So what I would encourage you to do is tape these lectures and then be sure and make use of the pause and the rewind button so that you can go back and, um, and see some of these things that maybe have caused you a little bit of difficulty, something that you've had trouble with. Maybe we get two-thirds of the way through a, a discussion and then you want to go back for a half an hour and, and see this whole thing over. You had that opportunity, whereas no student in class does have that, uh, that opportunity. What you need to do, and this is really important, commit yourself to a viewing schedule. Don't just watch these whenever you get a chance because you'll never get a chance or you may not get a chance. You're a busy person and that's why you're taking a telecourse is because you are busy. So what you really need to do is to make sort of an agreement with yourself. I'm going to watch these every other day, you know, from 8 o'clock till 9 o'clock in the evening. Or I'm going to watch them every morning from 6 to 7 o'clock. Or whenever it will fit into your schedule, that's not an important thing. What is important is that you are committed to keeping up with the discussion, with the class lectures. Um, each test will cover, and these are ballpark numbers, but each test will cover eight or nine uh, hours of lecture material. Uh, I know that anybody can sit down uh, on the couch and, s and push the play button and watch eight or nine hours of lecture all in one day. But the problem with that is you can't really absorb that much material in one day. What needs to be happening is uh, you'll maybe watch a lecture, think about it for a while, read the textbook, think about that for a while, and then watch another lecture. And pretty much the way students do that are attending class live. And so um, what I'm saying to you is you don't try to make the attempt to just kind of get all this stuff done in one or two days and then just think, you know, that's enough. All I have to do is spend a day or two with this right before each test. That's just not a very effective way of doing it. It's better than not watching the lectures at all. But the way to do this is watch two or three hours every week and keep up with the material, keep up with the readings. You'll know if you're having problem in plenty of time before a test, so you could send me email or come see me or come see the tutor. 
If you do everything at the last minute, there won't be time to ask your questions and to get an answer or to come see the tutor or come see me. So uh, uh, keep up with it. Make yourself a, a schedule and stick with that schedule the best you can. That's about all I have to talk about uh, right now. What we want to do is finish up this uh, first segment by going and um, to the computer. Uh, we've got an internet connection there. We'll spend, oh, just five, six minutes with that. I'll show you my home page, uh, how to send email, and a few things like that. And um, then you ought to be up to speed. Our next class, uh, what we'll do is we'll have uh, all the students sitting in here with me. And uh, I'll be giving the lecture uh, live. And uh, you'll be watching from the back of the classroom. And um, I hope you have a good time. Um, I certainly do. I enjoy economics. I've pretty much made that my life. Uh, I hope I can bring some of the enjoyment, the excitement that I feel from economics. Um, I hope I can bring that to you. If there's anything I can do as the semester progresses, I hope you'll let me know. Um, I'm certainly willing to put in the effort. and. Um, uh, all I want is for you to have a successful experience here, get a good grade, and come away with some knowledge about how the economy works. You and I, all of us, uh, live in this modern economy, and there's no way we can avoid it. We're workers, we're consumers, we're business owners, and uh, that being the case, uh, the best way uh, for us to manage our economic affairs is to have some understanding about this economic environment in which we uh, operate, and that's what I hope to bring you this semester. Thanks for signing up for the class, and I uh, hope you have a good time. So long. Oh, hi. Um, well, I wanted to start off by talking a little bit about the Internet. We'll be doing some Internet material during the semester, and uh, I don't want to just give you that assignment without making certain that you're up to speed on that. I also want to make sure that you're comfortable with uh, email because uh, that'll be an important way for you to communicate with me if you have questions or if you'd like to uh, ask me what your grade is on a particular exam. Um, I've got the internet here with, on this uh, monitor and you'll be able to see that. Uh, I start off, of course, in a familiar place with the SMS's home page. Um, let's get a little bit familiar maybe to begin with with some of the terms. Um, this software that we're using uh, to access the internet. The general term for that is a browser and there are several browser softwares and um, it really doesn't matter which one you're using, you'll be able to gain access to these same services in any way. So anyway, this is our browser. Um, what you can notice is up at the top of the screen uh, there's a, a box, a rectangular area, and that's where you type in the address that you're interested in visiting. Uh, SMS's address is, of course, the one that I have now since we're visiting SMS's home page. Um, all these addresses, or almost all of them, start off with the same few letters, HTTP, uh, and then there's a colon and two slashes. And after that, then, um, each website, internet website that you visit will have its own address. Uh, usually, after this HTTP in the colon, slash, slash, usually what you'll see is www, World Wide Web. And then uh, for SMS, for example, it's www dot, or a period, smsu dot, or again a period, edu. Then um, above the address box, uh, there are a number of other buttons that uh, you can just kind of glance across and look at. Uh, the ones that I use the most are at the, uh, the left-hand side. One says back and one says forward. Um, uh, by clicking on those buttons with the mouse, a person's able to go back to the previous uh, page that they were on or forward to the one that, um, um, that maybe they had visited before and backed up. Now they need to return to that, uh, that uh, web page again. Um, so anyway, and, and all you have to really do is kind of experiment with these buttons a little bit. Nothing can go wrong. Your computer won't blow up. So be sure that you feel comfortable with this and just play around with it a bit. At the top of the screen, um, depending on which browser you're using, but there's a, a button that says favorites or bookmarks. And uh, that's a place that a person can um, basically save these addresses. Uh, over time you accumulate those as you visit places and find those uh, interesting, something you'd like to come back to again. You can create a bookmark or a favorite and um, then that address will be remembered and that way you don't have to um, keep all that in your mind. Then you just go down the list and uh, pick your favorite off of there and, and go right back to there. Um, 
what I wanted to do is to uh, show you my home page um, and then after my home page show you um, a little bit about the, the bear mail which is the place that you can go to get your uh, email or send email for example to me to ask about your grade and then after that we'll look at some economic websites why don't we do that now well, let me just type my address in here for my web page um, I want to caution you, uh, you'll see a bunch of addresses up here today, both to my web page and to the other places that we visit. Um, those addresses can be changed over time uh, depending on the administrator or the person who designs uh, these web pages. And so uh, just because you see a certain address up at the top right now it doesn't mean that six months from now or a year from now you'll be able to visit that same address. You may have to hunt uh, and find the location again. but. Um, uh, just keep that in mind and don't be writing these addresses down like you know they're going to be good forever. So anyway, I've typed in uh, my address. Let me hit the return button and here it says my name up at the top, Tom Weirich, Economics Department, SMS, and so forth. Um, normally, and you'll notice this uh, a lot of places that you visit, but when you see text in blue, um, with an underline, then normally that's a link. Normally if you move your mouse to where that link is, the mouse, the arrow, will turn into a finger and uh, that means that it's a hot link that you can, by clicking on that, go to another uh, destination on the internet. Um, so anyway, if you'll notice here fairly high up on the page after my name and a little bit of information about me, uh, my courses and then there's Economics 155 listed. And so um, that'll be the place that you visit in order to find things like um, what the course policy statement and the schedule for the class, uh, announcements um, that I might have during the semester, handouts, and, and so forth. Just a, a wide variety of things. Uh, if let's say that there's a snow day and and a class doesn't meet, then you'll find some announcement here about that, you know, what you're supposed to do when you should come and, and so forth. So anyway, um, you should come here, become a little bit familiar with it, navigate around, and uh, just make sure that if, you know, something would come up, you wouldn't be uh, just lost and not know what to do, that you'd be able to come here fairly easily. Um, one of the things I like to do, we won't do much here with uh, the course page, we haven't really gotten into the material that much yet, but what I'd like to do is to uh, show you something called Bear Mail. Uh, Bear Mail is a website, or I don't know exactly how it's phrased, but Bear Mail is uh, the service that uh, is available to SMS students and faculty and staff uh, in order to get their mail, uh, either get their email or to send email to somebody. And uh, I'd like you to be familiar with this because uh, I'm not really able to give out grades over the telephone. And in order to avoid having to drive into school or send me a letter and uh, with a stamp on it and so forth, what you could do is come here and log in and send me some email and say, hey, I'd like to know what I got on that second test and, you know, that sort of thing. I'd be happy to send you uh, your answer, your score. Um, all you have to do, you can see these things on the screen, user ID, uh, and that is what the, your initials, uh, in my particular case that's TLW, and then after that your social security number, what is it, the last three numbers, and for me that's 018, and then uh, F, uh, from, in my particular case, stands for faculty. So my user ID is TLW018F. After that, the password, I'm not going to be telling you my password, but you'll have your own password. If you don't, you want to for sure sign up for one over at Computer Services. And then down at the bottom, you pick the server that you're trying to access. Here are student, faculty, and staff. I'll pick faculty. And click on the button that says Login. And then you come up and, and find the email that you have. Uh, and also up at the top, there's a, it says Check Mail. Compose, compose would what you, be what you would do if you want to um, compose a message to somebody else. Now you may not use this, you may, uh, on your particular browser, you may have some other email program and that would be fine, but, but bare mail is something that's available to all SMS students at no charge. All you have to do is sign up for this service. Uh, we won't check my mail, I just wanted to show you that website. We'll go back to my home page. Um, 
So we've seen my home page and we've seen the bear mail. I guess you saw uh, there a second ago, we saw the uh, uh, SMS's home page. Let's go down here on my um, home page, scroll down a little ways, and what you'll see is that there's several uh, links for economic uh, information, economic material, including some of the stuff that we talk about in this class. Um, again, my home page won't always look this way, so you won't always be able to see exactly these things, but I will always have economic information uh, here on my home page that you'll be uh, welcome to visit and take advantage of. And here's just a number of different websites. Uh, let's click on this one. It's called Briefing Room. Uh, and it's economic data and charts from the White House in Washington. Um, the president's uh, staff keeps uh, this stuff uh, current. And um, gosh, there's just all sorts of materials here. Production, sales, orders, and inventories is one link. A output, income expenditures, and well, just all sorts of things. And this is a great place to come if you're just trying to find out a little bit of information that current. It doesn't necessarily go back for a long ways, but uh, it's current information and uh, you'll be able to see how the economy is doing and monitor that. Here's gross domestic product, the, uh, the broadest measure of economic activity in the United States. And uh, it'll show you that it's uh, how much gross domestic products up or down for that quarter that it's reporting on, a quarter being, of course, uh, three months, a uh, fourth of a year. Um, you can also click on a button and get a chart. Uh, of gross domestic product, and uh, that'll give you a little bit, uh, kind of a graphical explanation of how the economy has been performing. And um, so, you know, that's the type of thing that you're going to find at this website. Uh, you can find the specific data on how much gross domestic product is and how rapidly it's been growing, and then the components of gross domestic product. So there's really just a wide variety of information um, that you'll be able to find here. And there's all sorts of other things. Prices, so that would tell us about the inflation rate. Uh, employment and unemployment, that uh, obviously tells us how many people are working, how many people would like to be working that can't find jobs, and so forth. So this is kind of an easy way to monitor the economy. Uh, there are a lot of websites, uh, a lot of them government websites, that have the same sort of information. And so uh, really what you ought to do is familiarize yourself with this. There's economic news releases. Uh, you know, a lot of times you'll see uh, in the newspaper where they'll say, oh, and the government reported today that the unemployment rate for November was such and such, and you know, this sort of thing. Uh, when you read those reports in the newspaper, the newspaper reporter didn't just make that information up. Uh, they relied on press releases that are released by government agencies. And so you can go and find some of these economic news releases at the web, uh, on the internet, and uh, you'll know about as much about it as, uh, as the reporter that wrote the story. So um, here we're at the Bureau of Labor Statistics website. Uh, the Bureau of Labor Statistics is um, it's a part of the Labor Department. But um, their function basically is to monitor the economy, those parts of the economy that are relevant to workers. And uh, the union leaders and employers of workers and, and various people. Economists are, of course, interested in all this stuff. But uh, this would be something that you might want to visit to see the news releases. This is really a wonderful uh, thing. Before the internet came along, there was really no way that you could get these news releases in a timely way. Uh, you could sign up for a service and then receive the news release in the mail a week or two later, but uh, by then the newspaper article would have been out and you're sort of behind the curve on that. Uh, nowadays we get this information at the same time uh, the reporters get it, and the reporters in Washington, D.C. Um, I won't take you through a lot of this stuff because uh, I want to leave a lot of it for you. Uh, but the point is, is that um, there's just really a, a wealth of information on the Internet about the economy. And uh, I would urge you to spend some time with this, familiarizing yourself with it. As we go along, a lot of what I will talk about this semester will be theories. And uh, you may sometimes think, gosh, I'd like to know a little bit of more than just the theory. I'd like to know how that works in the real world. And this would be a place that you could come and look and see, uh, do some checking, and uh, maybe ask me some hard questions about, hey, how do you explain this or that? Anyway, as I say, I'd like you to spend some time with this. Uh, and uh, uh, if you have any trouble with it, of course, send me a little bit of email. Tell me what your problem is or give me a call on the phone, and I'll be able to help you with it. We'll talk later.